all so this is our second lecture of uh, the previous video we made on dirac equation the video uh, had already become so long so i decided to make a separate video so last time we were here so we discussed that this is the uh, dirac equation okay so what's special about it uh, about this dirac equation is it is first order in time and first order in space so that's a good thing okay that means it's relatively invariant and along with this uh, we have got some uh, some set of properties of the alpha matrices which is this by comparing the equation the, we compared the lhs and rhs so we got these set of equation so we will now further probe on the properties of these alphas and betas what are they we will try to figure out okay so let's proceed so uh, we know that any physical uh, if uh, any operator corresponds to a physical observable so that operator must be hermitian hermitian operator okay why why uh, why the operator should be hermitian because only hermitian operator uh, because hermitian operators has real eigen value and any uh, any quantity corresponding to the physical observable must be real okay so as you know the dirac equation is h t of psi is equals to e psi where is the dirac hamiltonian is given by p times of alpha dotted with p plus of beta m not of c square fine this was the dirac hamiltonian now this dirac hamiltonian must be hermitian why it should be hermitian because only because hermitian operator have the real eigen values so okay so it should be hermitian so what is the condition for hermitian operator that is h dagger as dirac dagger should be equals to hd so let's take the dagger of hd which is hd hd is simply c alpha dot p plus of beta m not c square let's take the dagger of it which it which should be equal to c times alpha dot p plus of beta m not c square fine okay so what's next now you know p is a physical observable okay p is a physical observable so p dagger should be equals to p okay so when we take dagger and one 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 thing also to discuss here as you know a b dagger is equals to b dagger a dagger okay that's a mathematical property we will use uh, use that here so when you dagger the first term this term so p dagger is simply p so alpha dagger will be alpha so it will be p times alpha dagger alpha dagger plus of beta dagger as m not c m not c square is a constant okay dagger will have no effect on that that's a constant and that's a real number sorry that's a real number that's what i want to say that's a real number similarly in rhs you have as it is alpha dot p plus of beta m not c square okay so now you can see if you compare the coefficients you find that you find that alpha dagger must be equal to alpha okay so alpha dagger must be equals to alpha and similarly beta dagger must be equals to beta so what does it mean if something's dagger is equals to that proper thing so that means that is hermitian what's the conclusion so the conclusion is alpha and beta are hermitian matrices hermitian matrices as we have discussed previously that these are matrices how because they anti commute so the first conclusion before and in the previous video was alpha and beta are matrices alpha and beta are matrices okay so this time we conclude that alpha and beta are hermitian matrices so hermitian matrices if there are hermitian matrices then there must be square matrices so alpha and beta are square matrices are square hermitian matrices are square matrices Uh, square matrix okay so this is one more conclusion what else we can say about alpha and beta let's try to figure it out so we have these relations also these one and these one so which one we can use first uh, let's first use this equation and see what's the property we get so we have so we have we have alpha j beta plus of beta f j equals to 0 so this uh, this we what we got by comparing the coefficient let's uh, play with it what can we do let's first just take it to right hand side you will you will have alpha j beta is equals to minus of beta alpha j 
fine let's open the alpha j on both the sides okay so if you operate alpha j on uh, multiply by alpha j on both the sides what do you have you have alpha j beta alpha j is equals to minus of beta alpha j squared alpha j squared you know is equals to one how you previously see that i will show you the relation again c alpha j squared is equals to one fine so we will use that here so as alpha j squared is equals to one so you will have alpha j beta alpha j is equals to minus of beta fine so this is what you got now let's take the trace both of the sides so taking the trace you will have alpha j beta alpha j is equals to minus of <coughs> trace of beta fine now you know the cyclic property of trace what is the cyclic property of trace trace of a comma b comma c happens to be trace of c a b happens to be equal to trace of see the cyclic order a b c so first we have a b c then we have c a b now we have b c a trace of b c a okay all of these are the same things so trace property follows this uh, cyclic property similarly trace of a comma b will be trace of b comma a okay so these are some mathematical facts okay let's uh, use the property on this thing so when you use the property on this thing you will have trace of alpha j alpha j beta fine alpha j alpha j beta so minus of trace of beta what will be this equals to this will be equal to alpha j square will be one this alpha j square will be one so you will be having you will be having trace of beta is equals to minus trace of beta so that means two times trace of beta is equals to zero you can see it coming so we have trace of beta is equals to zero fine so remember this result we have trace of beta is equals to zero so this is our first result about so okay this is the first first result about trace now similarly let's many let's do a different thing what do you have you have the relation alpha uh, alpha j beta plus of beta alpha j equals to zero so last time what we did was we <coughs> operated both we multiplied both sides by alpha j this time we, we will do something different okay first write me it as like this so last time when we multiplied both sides by alpha j what do we get so alpha j square become one so what what uh, what if we multiply both sides by beta what will happen beta square will uh, become one so we will we can get the trace property we can get the trace of alpha okay so let's do alpha j beta is equals to minus of beta alpha j so when we um, take both sides you will multiply both sides by beta what do you have you have alpha j so this beta square will become one okay how again you can see in the properties to so see this beta square is equals to one this is from the previous video so beta square is nothing but one and equals to minus of beta alpha j beta again we can tra take trace of both sides when you take trace of both sides you will be having trace of alpha j sorry you can you will be having trace of alpha j equals to minus of trace of beta alpha j beta again you can use the cyclic property in here so you will be having minus of trace of beta square alpha j fine now beta square is equals to one beta square is equals to one so beta square is equals to one so you will be having trace of alpha j equals to minus of trace of alpha j so again you can see it coming two times trace of alpha j is equals to zero so that means trace of alpha j equals to also zero so what do you find you find that two properties trace of alpha 
is also zero and trace of beta also zero so these alphas and betas are traceless and hermitian matrices so what's the conclusion of today's video is this conclusion alpha j where j is equal to 1 to 3 and beta r traceless hermitian matrices fine so this is the conclusion matrices